so do you look you you look right there is perfect yes that's absolutely perfect uh, that's even hey i'm gonna join you i'm gonna do the same thing on mine so we look the same so we just i'll put a hand in front of it to do that no it's it's perfect uh, okay have it wherever you had it now now it's going like oh man paxton messed it all up for yeah for, for lauren <laughs> i'm not listening to i'm not listening to him anymore uh no it's perfect you're perfect as is uh i'm gonna keep my mouth shut see that's what i'm gonna do uh, I I have uh, I have to tell you I appreciate all of the videos that you do because not only are they they give a different take on what a lot of people talk about, but yours explains it so much better. <laughs> I, I'm I'm just thinking I I pause because I'm thinking how many people are gonna write me and go like Hey wait a minute Paxton I was on your <laughs> show and <laughs> I just thought, I just made some enemies by what I just said my mouth got me in trouble again. All right. Uh, by the way, the apple is really cool. By the way, I just want you to know that it looks it looks nice back there. What you got going on? Um, all right. So um, as I uh, stop the music, um, your bio says that you reset and rebalance. And, and correct me, please, if I get it wrong. The nervous system. Did I say that right? Yeah. That's okay. Focus, um, and it's it's a very kind of simplified way of putting it. But I'm more and more trying to really see our life experience as something that we can reset if we choose to in terms of kind of looking at various factors and why our nervous systems are dysregulated and just ways that we can reset. So I'm, I'm constantly moving away from shame and judgment and, and okay. some of the time, you know, labels and just really bringing it back to who we are just primal beings who are all connected by the same physiology um, and it's about resetting you know we get in our life experiences shape our nervous system and sometimes our life experiences shape it in a very dysregulated defensive reactive way so these techniques of the reset just look at rebalancing so it's not fixing it's not looking to get rid it's not saying there's anything wrong it's just restoring balance Okay, so that is the foundation of what made me find you someone that I wanted to, well, tap into your brain. Because what you're talking about is really the basis for me going, okay, rebalance, reset. And you just mentioned also, well, rebalancing and resetting is one thing. But what gets in the way of that? People can become defensive, correct? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned another D there, and it just went. It just went. I just thought of it. You just said it. Uh, D, D, uh, you just said something else. Just uh, say this it again. Word. Yeah, that word. I like that word. I looked it up. So, <laughs> so, so I'm a word guy. I like looking up words. Dictionaries. I love dictionaries. So, <laughs> so we got reset and rebalance on one side. And then th this is just me looking at it again. You correct me. You know it better than I do. And then we have on this other side, people can become def defensive or we, it may be, what was the word again? Dysregulated. Dysregulated. Yeah. So, so for me as a guy, I'm looking yeah. at the two going like I could be on this side and live my life that way yeah. and interact with people that way. That's not going to be pretty good. No bueno. That's not too good. Or I can look at it from what you're presenting as a reset and a rebalancing. Yeah. And some people are more open to that than others. Some others may want to stay on this other side. Yeah. I'm just telling you what, what I thought of when I looked at your page. Yeah. And I said, she's a pretty smart cookie, man. She's pretty smart. Oh, I shouldn't say a cookie. Now I'm going to get, now I'm going to get, now somebody's oh. going to write me about that. <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble all day today. Uh, I'm in trouble all week. No, I don't get hate mail. I don't get hate mail that doesn't invite everybody now to send me hate mail. And if you do, I don't even read it anyhow because I'm going to figure that you're dysregulated. But it was, <laughs> I just made that up. I just made that up. All right, drop the mic. Show's over. You okay? Just go. Just go to my page. Don't go to Lord. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, but it gives it. It gives us a different way to look at instead of like you said, instead of fixing or I'm just going to kick this person to the curb they may not be open to being reset or rebalanced and it may work for them and their their group okay 
That's the most I have actually taken over a show. I literally <laughs> just did that. Now you're going like, he just said he doesn't talk that much during the show. <laughs> he just told me that in the show prep, when he did all the talking, that in the show I get to talk, and now I have to sit here and listen to Paxton talk. That so this this me wait I'm gonna keep going now no it's too late now <laughs> this this wait no I'm gonna stop I am gonna stop but this this means nothing to a person who is not done a show prep with me mm. if you've done a show prep you know the torture you go through where I do most of the talking and then promise that I will be quiet during the show you are the first person I ever just did that to I am so sorry <laughs> now I now I go shuddy shuddy. <laughs> Please, diva of the day. Well, it was I, pretty, I think it was, oh. I did it because it really, um, it took <laughs> the conversation up to the level that I need. So. Okay, no, hey, you know what? I, I'll be quiet so it won't start going down. Go to it, Lauren, my friend. Go ahead. Go ahead. Break this down to us. I just had an epiphany moment and figured oh. out what, you, what you're talking about. That's like, you're cool. Yeah. I, I you, need to make, you need to make t-shirts. <laughs> Seriously, reset, rebalance, you know, you know. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm all for that. But just to kind of like jump off, off what you were saying, it's it's exactly that. And I think a lot of people aren't interested in, in resetting. And, and it's about understanding that and not shaming them or judging them at all. Because at the end of the day, particularly people who've experienced trauma, their body is not going to change into new habits without consistent proof that the new habits are safe so so all these reactive defensive behaviors are self-protective behaviors and they're adaptive behaviors based on somebody's life experience and and it's about reframing it as as a beautiful thing because our bodies have done that to keep us safe and to keep us alive they're not the most helpful habits some of the time but i think this is where i i kind of really I'm focusing on doing away with the shame and judgment of it all because what's happened and that person or people who have been reactive and dysregulated and I mean emotional dysregulation where you're just full of overwhelm and, and not coping those right, right, right. are a direct result of that person's life experience so I always say to people if two people were put in the exact same situation and had the exact same life experience, they would exhibit identical behaviors. And I know it's simplified and, and, and obviously there are a lot of other mitigating factors, but at the end of the day, our nervous mm -hmm. system are shaped according to our life experiences. So if somebody is reactive or is depressive, it's highly likely that they, they've experienced some adverse life experiences that their bodies have needed to adapt to those self-protective behaviors. So again, it's looking at it what it is instead of this kind of stigma we have around mental health and anxiety and reactive behavior it's about meeting people where they are mm -hmm. and understanding that that's what our bodies have done in response to perceived threats and i say perceived threat because what threat is to one person might mm -hmm. not be threat to another yeah. person um and, and again, and those, those, yeah. those if i if i may those perceived yeah. threats uh those circumstances and situations Mm -hmm. uh, or, or with any given time limit, time frame, over a period of time, mm -hmm. and a person could literally move their life into a totally different period of time instead of circumstances, but yet can still be framed. Mm -hmm. uh, they can still be, as it were, in their mind, balanced to mm -hmm. approach this circumstance a certain way, but actually they're not back where the trauma happened anymore. They're reliving the trauma mm -hmm. by being reactive, but yet they're in a totally different situation. They're with a totally different person, but yet they're being reactive to a trauma that happened 10, 15, two hours ago. Yeah. But yet they're, I mean, you know, they're still living in that. So how can a person, because now you added another R, yeah. you got refresh. Did I get that right? Reset. Um, re reset. Yeah. Excuse me. Reset. Excuse me. Reset. Rebalance. And then you mentioned reframe. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I told you I'm a word. I'm a weird word guy. I'm a nerd. So I just I pick up on. So to me, I'm looking at. Okay, how do I? Which one do I do first? Do I reframe it so that I can reset it and then restore my balance or, or rebalance? Yeah. Do I reset it first? Do I reframe it? What What would be the scenario 
of a person trying to work this through and they're they're learning from you mm -hmm. and they said okay lauren i'm ready to do this which one do i tackle first mm -hmm. do i start reframing my life mm -hmm. so that i can push the reset as many times as i need to which will give me a pattern of rebalancing mm -hmm. i'm just throwing that out there to you Not you know i don't I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm Robin, you're a bad girl, so go ahead and tell me. You're spot on. And again, I think the starting point, okay, so, so what we're actually dealing with, the kind of physicality behind it all, our, one of the biggest causes of reactive behavior and emotional overwhelm is the fear of isolation. So we're, we're pack animals, we're pack beings, yes. and Correct. we have right. engagement systems, so we thrive um, in connectedness. Anything that makes us feel that we're separate from the pack or different, if we feel that our behavior is going to isolate us from the pack, it's going to result in more stress and horm uh, the stress hormone cortisol in our body. And what's that, what that's going to do is dysregulate us even further. So if we're looking at the goal, the goal is to rebalance the nervous system. What we're looking at is a very like over-exercised red brain mindset, which is the dysregulated reactive overwhelm, our defensive based behaviors. But but if I may ask before you yeah. go on, the goal to do so is to have connectivity then. Yes. So the whole object okay, got it. Okay. I just want to make sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm speaking for the I'm speaking for the guys in the room, ladies. So if you <laughs> I'm, like, when the guys go back, they go like Paxton, that was too fast for me. I didn't get it. Okay, but no, go ahead. Please, go yeah. ahead. I'm with you. I'm with you. So basically, what we're looking at doing is we're looking at uh, we're looking at exercising this back into balance. And what we need to do Correct. is we, we need to develop techniques, which is part of the reset. But the first and foremost part of the whole process, like you say, is establishing connection. So somebody who wants to reframe and reset effectively mm -hmm. in a sustainable way needs to anchor onto somebody who can hold space for them so that's where kind of coaching comes in in terms they're, of something. they're holding they're holding space for that person mm -hmm. because they're allowing them to reframe in other words they're, they're not doing it for them this person has to uh, mm -hmm. is, is that correct i don't I, is that correct if you start the whole process somebody's body has to feel safe enough to do okay. anything and they may need a coach or someone to help them work through that initial process and ongoing till they reach their goal. Mm. So they just need to find connection in terms of, like you say, that kind of where we start with the reframe, it can be somebody virtually or a good friend even, but it's, it's okay. about, about attaching onto a safety queue and connecting with somebody so they don't feel alone. So that's where the kind of first step is. Got it. From, got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Moving away from shame and, and judgment labeling. Right. Cause Often that will make somebody feel more alone and then they won't be able to reframe. And I think a lot of this, the kind of essential understanding of all of this is that nobody does any of this on purpose. It's what our bodies responds to. It's our body's response to our environment. So it's about helping the body to access mm -hmm. these skills. So that's why a lot of kind of mainstream therapy, they speak about a top down approach and it doesn't really connect with anyone who's experienced trauma or who's living in very stressful environments because their body needs a bottom up approach. And, and that's why the first step is, is this bottom up approach, working with the body to help the body to feel safe enough to allow the person to do the work. So, so what we've got to remember is these defensive based behaviors are coping mechanisms to ensure survival so the body's not going to give that up easily it's something no that it's fight. accustomed to it right it's accustomed to it so it's not going to give it up mm. um but there is a measure i'm just throwing this out there it doesn't have to be ta tackled right now but there is a measure then that comes into play at least from my perspective and trying to under uh, understand the full spectrum of what you're 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 talking about which is very juicy and i love it if a person finds themselves with their as being a free moral agent to choose and they decide that dysregulation is the life that they want mm -hmm. because they're a part of a dysregulated gang of people mm -hmm. or <laughs> they find themselves uh, on death row because they are glad that they're killers i mean you know i'm just mm -hmm. there can be those who decide that reframing is not for them in yeah. other words but that's a choice that they make Absolutely. but as a whole we're talking about 
I'm bringing this up to you because if somebody watches this later and go like, well, I know people that don't want to reframe, yeah. <laughs> but we're not talking about that right now. Mm -hmm. We're talking about not labeling, judging, judging and putting someone in a position that they're pinned in a corner and they see no way out, but yet there is a way out. They could possibly work with someone who's a specialist like you mm -hmm. to work, as you put it, from the bottom up. Yeah. That is so cool the way you said that. I love that. <laughs> Seriously. I'm sorry. That's a t-shirt too. <laughs> 1999. The way that <laughs> work from the bottom, work from the bottom up. Mental health, you know, unique behavior. You know, I'm yeah. sorry. I I think I think like that. Please okay. go ahead. I interrupted you there uh, because I wanted to ask that question. Some people are not open to what you're talking about. That's on them. We're talking about those, and I want those that watch this on my platforms, this public service uh, format. We're talking about those who want to do the work mm, mm, mm. And, and us not pushing people in a corner as if they can't do the work. Mm. And, and exactly that. But I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to go a step even further and say that the people who don't want to do the work, that's fine, too, because I think we've we've been put in a society where um, some behavior, if it's misunderstood, it's rejected. And and I I think that the only way forward really is to embrace our humanity and to realize that we are socially connected beings. So, so physically we have a social engagement system and when our nervous system is balanced, we are naturally prone to pro-social behaviors. So if somebody doesn't want to engage in that, it's because they've suffered the consequences of that feeling dangerous to them. So, so in terms of kind of, like you say, doing the work, it's incredibly uncomfortable and it takes often quite a big boost and a very definite motive um, or, you know, a goal to, to want to shift. Um, but mm -hmm. it's understandable if somebody doesn't, is my point, because basically... Understandable, yeah. ...the life of discomfort and people have hurt you and, and you've suffered a lot. It makes sense that you're not going to want to change anything that you've done that's resulted in your survival. Um, so I kind of liken it to a ninja response. So there's kind of two, two kind of main stress responses. So there's the ninja who's kind of more prone to, to fight or flight behaviors. And mm -hmm. if you think of a ninja, a ninja is designed to keep the body alive. And if somebody's had adverse life experiences throughout their life, they're gonna have a very skilled ninja and it's a skilled ninja because it's kept that body alive. But that ninja can can scout threats like this. And, and often, like you say, mm -hmm. when people are re-traumatized and, and there's, a, there's a lot of misunderstanding around, you know, kind of trauma being in the background, why are they experiencing it now? And basically there's a, what I call the stress gap. So our bodies perceive threat at eight milliseconds or they they register threat our body registers threat at eight milliseconds but it mm -hmm. only registers our conscious mind at half a second so okay. this is one of the reasons why there's so many arguments or unnecessary arguments between work colleagues or household members because often what can happen is due to your life experiences your brain patterns things a certain way so your your behavior again is an adaptive response to patterning so, for example, if I, as a child, was bitten quite badly by a dog, I could be sitting here and there could be a dog barking in the background and, and I've, my body has registered it. My body releases cortisol, the stress hormone, and I'm in a state of defensiveness. When our body is dysregulated or in that defensive state, it actually changes our perception of other. So, so when our body clocks into that defensive state, other people are more often than not perceived as a threat. So I would have felt that dog barking. My body would have been locked into that defensive state. You say something in the wrong way and I'm like, oh my God, Paxton, you know, and I'm like ready to be reacted. Right. And, and it's, a, it's a chain of events and that's just something that's biological and something that we're predisposed to. But the whole purpose of the kind of reframe is to see it for what it is. So we've been kind of, trained to think, oh, what could it be? Why do I feel, what did Paxton say that upset me so much? I can't really figure it out. And it's actually had nothing to do with you. It was that the dog mm -hmm. barked in the distance, you know, in that gap between the eight milliseconds and the half a second. So, 
So again, just to understand that our body, again, has these defensive coping mechanisms and these adaptive behaviors in response to perceived threat. So that's where our ninja comes into play. And the ninja, in response to kind of this kind of work and like doing the work, like mm -hmm. you say, it's not going to work if you go up to a ninja and say, oh, put your weapons down, it's safe. There's no chance that ninja, that highly skilled ninja, is going to put its weapons down. What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? By all means, no, please go ahead. I apologize. Go ahead. What, what the ninja needs to put the weapons down is to be shown over a certain period of time that the environment is safe enough for it to put its weapons down. And that's the whole process of the reset. And, and when we're working with this bottom up approach, it's not a cerebral cognitive, come on, let's reframe, come on, let's just tell ourselves, come on, let's just do this. It doesn't really happen like that when there's been stress stored in the body as a result the re of adverse. The reframing is not an affirmation party. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not, um, it's not a let's have as many drinks as we can and just blurt out and curse, curse it out party. Um, mm -hmm. It's literally feeling emotionally safe so that we can mentally process everything. I'm, I'm just asking. I'm not saying because no one, no one will believe that I know what I'm talking about. So I'm just asking questions that I know my, my audience would ask. So, uh, so reframing uh, is not something that somebody could just wish themselves into or, or just kind of platitude themselves and happy juice themselves. Uh, the work that you're talking about for the nervous system and reframing it, it could have had a number of years of one major or multiple major uh, traumatic events that caused mm -hmm. it to constantly be in ninja mode. Mm -hmm. But now I got to defer to Darcy who wrote us something on the screen. She asked the question, uh, what do you do? Uh, let's see here. What do you do if you get stuck in ninja model it, or mode? I'm or mode. That's his mode. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What do you do if you get stuck in ninja mode? So that's a, that's a great question because that basically just it gives me an example to work off in terms of kind of the reframe. So what the reframe is, is focusing on the facts of the situation. So so that example I gave with the dog bite uh, or the dog bark, the reframe is not to is to reshift and reframe from what did Paxton say that really annoyed me to my body feels stressed or my body has had a stress reaction or my body is dysregulated. So that's the reframe. You're taking it away from your conceptual perception and you're reframing it onto the facts right in front of you. There's a dysregulated body here because that's what's actually happening. So that's the reframe, the first and foremost. It's training, training your mind to just keep reframing back to instead of judging and trying to create reason. Label it. Right. Yeah, we're reframing it back to the body. So when you're stuck in ninja mode, what you need to do, and so what often happens is if you're in ninja mode, what could often happen is the more I'm going down the route of my conception and emotional perception of it, thinking, what did you say? Is it how you looked at me that said that? Or could, could it have been something that you said that maybe connected back to a childhood experience and then I'm thinking mm -hmm. of that and then I'm reliving that and all mm -hmm. I'm doing is, is, is gearing up more and more as a ninja. So what you're doing... Mm -hmm. When you're in ninja mode, you're looking at the neurochemistry of it. You've got the option of to carry on trying to make sense of it through that conception and emotional perception. But then I'm flooding my body with cortisol, that stress hormone, which is going to lock me in ninja mode. Or I reframe and I think, right, my body is dysregulated. What mm -hmm. do I need to do to regulate? So, so there's the ninja ready to fight. And what we're doing is the body, what we're doing, and in terms of the whole process of bringing it back into balance, what we're doing when we're locked in Ninja, we have to start the other engine up. So when we're locked in that red brain defensive mindset, we have to put practices in place that activate our vagal break, which is almost like a magnet. The stronger okay, the magnet, right. the pull it all back into balance. So when we're in Ninja mode, it's about looking... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Time out. Hold your next thought. Go for it like a magnet yeah it'll pull it back into balance yeah but it's got to be a pretty strong and reactive balance magnet in itself that we've utilized and made it strong mm -hmm. to pull the ninja back in place is that mm -hmm. what you're saying yes exactly okay we'll talk about the blue brain in just a second but go ahead <laughs> blue, yeah. okay go, go ahead so red brain i, I watch hey i looked at your page i research everybody before they come up so go ahead <laughs> go ahead go ahead 
So that's I can't I can't teach it, but I can I can I can try to keep up with you. Go ahead. Fantastic, John. Um, so basically, that's those exercises. When you're activating that vagal break, that's what we do when we're locked in ninja mode. So we reframe. We think, right, there's a dysregulated body here. My body is dysregulated. What do I need to do to regulate my body? And that's when some habits come in. So that's when we move towards the reset. So part of the reset, and it's not a quick fix, but it's starting to embed new habits and to show the ninja that the environment is safe through somatic body experiences. So what we do in that moment when we're in ninja mode, when we notice that our body's dysregulated and we're familiar with what that feels like which is also part of the practice to just observe and think right. oh, I'm in my chest am i feeling it mm -hmm. what we do then is we do activities or techniques like gargling gargling is a great technique Screaming. okay now oh, come on now seriously are you i saw that on your page are you, yeah. are you, are you and i was waiting for you to mention that if not i was going to ask you i was going to ask you to gargle yeah. Does that be a saltwater gargle? Would that be a Corona beer gargle? Would that be a Listerine? What are we talking about here? Are we, are we talking about an air gargle? Like, oh, uh, we uh, just, we just... To stimulate that part of the of the throat. So the vagus nerve, like too scientific now probably, but the vagus nerve is the... No, 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 no. This, hey, listen. I've got people that watch this show and they're geniuses. Oh, just brilliant. because you're talking to a dummy doesn't mean that they won't figure it out and tell me later. You just go ahead and go. Don't say it's too scientific. No, go ahead. Go ahead and drop your knowledge. Go ahead and drop your knowledge. You go like, uh, she go, Lauren goes like, I may be good looking, but I got brains. <laughs> I know. I know you're smart because you got that apple back there. You probably have an apple, apple a day, but go ahead. Go on and go ahead. Break it down for us. Go get scientific. The vagus nerve, so that vagal break, so the vagus nerve is what we want to really strengthen. So it's called strengthening our vagal tone. So our, that, our that, vagal to, our vagal tone. Our vagal tone is what. So that's the yeah. the magnet is the vagal tone. So we do that through things that stimulate the vagal break and activate the blue brain mindset, which is the opposite side, which is the parasympathetic nervous system. So that's our calm. So what we want to do is we want to do specific exercises that will okay. activate that manually, basically, to switch us out of ninja mode back into a calmer mindset where we can we might still be ninja but we're not ready to to strike our weapons to, to pounce on to pounce on somebody or create or have a reactive behavior to Absolutely. something we may need to take a step back Absolutely. and just rebalance or reframe uh, uh, regulate ourselves mm -hmm. okay the vagal nerve mm -hmm. you mentioned yeah back here you point it yeah so it's the tenth cranial nerve so things like gargling singing humming they all activate it so that it's it's almost like a manual switch so so, so gargling mm. singing humming and and humming mm. can mm. activate it mm. why are you smile why are you smiling I'm, I'm just i'm just you're talking to a guy i gotta break it down because you know <laughs> you, you intelligent women talk so fast for us as <laughs> guys we, we can't keep up so so those three gargling singing and humming yeah. can do that Mm. Um, so you're saying when we go into ninja mode, ninja yeah. mode, that we may need to gargle, hum, or sing to kind of help us reframe what's happening right in front of us instead of going into ninja mode and, yeah. uh, actually hurting some, I'm going to be doing that yeah. all day, by the way, yeah. uh, when I'm done with this show, I'm going to be walking around here going like ninja mode. <laughs> My daughter's going to think I'm crazy. All right. So, so, well, wait, they already do that. So. Ninja mode can be regulated, reframed, or put us in a situation where we can stay in the moment instead of uh, being caught up in a past trauma or past negative behavior that was a, that that came at us or that we have been through, and we actually could ruin our day because we're letting that past behavior get connected to what's present, and we're taking what's present out of context, maybe. Mm. And by doing that, we're changing the patterning. So the patterning is what we're working with nothing more than that so we're changing the pattern of our body so that we move away from hurting anyone with our words or our actions so i'll give you a good example a good working example i use myself as a guinea pig a couple of weeks ago oh wait 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 you don't have to but yeah. i want to hear the i want to hear the juicy details go ahead <laughs> <laughs> i want to know what you did um, so being you know pandemic <laughs> everyone's on edge everyone's massively dysregulated 
We had a morning a couple. No, of... no, 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 no. Only you, Doc. Only you. No, only you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so I had a, we had a morning a couple of weeks ago where we were on our way out to school, you know, right on the clock, ready to go, and my little girl soiled her nappy. You know, one of those. Yeah. Bro- uh, yeah. At the back. Yeah. Sorry, bro story. But anyway, that situation. And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay, we're definitely going to be late now. So anyway, I had to go and, and change her. And I was feeling the bubbling come up. I could feel that ninja getting ready with the actual, like, picking up the weapons. Like, <laughs> and I, my little boy telling me this very vivid, overexcitable Pokemon story, like, but, but like at me while I'm trying to change the nappy. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm trying to breathe. And I thought, this is not working. It's, it's really, it's hyping up. It's... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not allowed. Go ahead. That's right. It's a funny story. Um, and instead of instead of blowing, so I could feel the like ninja weaponizing, and my my what what has happened in the past when it's like very reactive and you just go, could you stop talking? Or you know anything that's reactive. I'm sorry. I, could you do that again, please? <laughs> I'd be framed. Hey. And I and Welcome, of, welcome to the planet Earth. Go yeah, ahead. <laughs> um, I re- and instead of sh- sh- shouting at anyone or hurting yes. anyone with my words or my actions, I said to my kids, "Mommy's just needing to scream in a pillow." So I grabbed a pillow because <laughs> it's energy that needs to get out at the end of the day. If you're feeling a bubbling, yeah. okay, okay, without shame. So I was like, "Right, mommy's going to scream in a pillow." Picked up the nearest pillow, screamed as loud as I could, and. And my kids thought it was hysterical. And I was able to de-escalate because screaming is another one, primal screaming. It releases okay. all the chemistry. It actually releases the okay. strength to allow the body to calm. So I'm like, whew, done. And I'm not left with any wreckage. I'm not left yeah. and just gone crazy with anyone. Yeah. So, so that's exactly the whole process. It's not doing away with the ninja. It's not trying to get rid of the ninja because the ninja is your ninja. It kept your life. So thank goodness for the ninja. It's your, about- ninja, your ninja is your ninja. <laughs> so it's about what? What were you about to say? It's about what? Just it's not getting rid of it. Just, just what again? De-weaponizing. So take, putting the weapons down. Okay. So we want to make sure to de-weaponize the ninja mm. unless the ninja needs their weapons. Mm. Okay. So you screamed into a pillow. <laughs> I would have loved to see that because I've, I've dealt with a mini soiled nappies with my children. They're grown now. I can't, I don't change. They're going to be, they're ready to change mine when it gets to that point. But, um, so you're going to, you screamed into a pillow. I would have loved to see that, but I am learning so much about screaming yeah. to a pillow or off the side of a mountain. I would assume would be just yeah. as good if you screamed into the air. Uh, singing, uh, gargling, and what was the other one? Humming. 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 Yeah. That explains a lot of Western movies now, why the sidekick always did the humming. <laughs> he was always the calm one, and the guy that was the star of the movie was the one always getting shot at, and he never sang, he didn't, you know, he didn't, he, you know, he reacted a lot. He evidently needed to be reframed where the sidekick was always the mellow one. I'm just saying, he was yeah. always the mellow one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're getting you're getting some info on the screen here again. Uh, let's see here. We get it from Darcy. Uh, Darcy says, uh, I don't know why I'm looking over here. I got it like in 15 different places here. Let me just look down over here. It's much bigger. Uh, it says, I love the idea of singing my way out of ninja mode. <laughs> singing is my favorite. I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at you, Darcy. You know, I love you. Uh, she was a great guest on the show. Uh, I love the idea of singing my way out of ninja mode. Uh, you're starting a whole trend here. Singing is my favorite. This is super timely for me. Thank you. Now, now I just want you to know, if Darcy, I'm going to have her on the show again. If Darcy comes on the show and she just starts singing, then I know I'm the cause of her ninja <laughs> mode coming. It, you know what? Darcy, Darcy's watching. Darcy's watching. If anybody else has been on the show with me and been a guest, and now I know why some people start humming when we're in the pre-show prep and they just start singing. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> now I understand when people start gargling and they're talking to me. I'm going to do that, though. I'm going to find some way to be in a situation that my ninja, my ninja's coming out. And uh, actually, 
Actually, that ninja thing I just did, my, my youngest daughter does that. She's 28, but we are all kids here. We act like little kids. But she she, she does that, so I'm, I'm taking that for her. When my ninja comes out, I'm just going to start gargling. <laughs> I'm just going to. I'm just going to, I don't know, maybe water. Maybe I'll just carry a little bottle of Listerine around and just, gar and just gargle. Yeah. My, dentist would, my dentist would love me, of course. <laughs> and I've got another funny one. You, for the funny okay. One. I'm, hey, I'm always up for the funny when we talk about serious stuff like human imperfection. Because uh, we're out to change the galaxy, everybody, here on Open Session underscore podcast. All right, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. It's called the funny face exercise. <laughs> Does is it activates all the parasympathetic nerve fibers on your face? So we've got loads of those kind of blue brain fibers on our face. So indeed, like literally, as many muscles as you can use, like try to do it for like two to three minutes a day, like, and you tap, and then your lips as well. And that's another good one. I call it the funny, and it's good to do with the kids as well. They love that. Yeah, I think it's really good to do at a stoplight or when you're in the checkout stand. <laughs> That's when I think it's a good time to do that because that is going to keep a lot of weirdos away. Maybe it won't. It may attract more weirdos than I think about. Okay, listen, all of you single women, you need to be doing that when you're when you go somewhere and you want a guy to leave you alone. <laughs> I'm telling my daughters that one. I'm telling my daughters that when they're single. Okay, this is what you do if a guy starts to get too fresh. Just do just do that. Okay. So that um exercise helps because a lot of as you mentioned a lot of the blue nerves if you don't know what that is please go to at unique underscore behavior that is lauren's page at unique underscore behavior now lauren uh, as uh, many of you uh, who watch this show or know what i'm about to mention to lauren uh feel free to type in if you can if you can't right now type into the screen your page for everybody so they don't have to keep hearing me say at unique underscore behavior Feel free to type that in so they can follow you. Uh, but if you go to her page right now, you get a better idea of what we're having, uh, talking about right now in this discussion that we're having, uh, of the red brain as well as the uh, blue brain uh, um, example. The ninja is also there. Uh, there is a post concerning gargling, gargling as well. Uh, you, agree, I'm, you have no idea. You have no idea. You, you keep watching my shows. I'm going to be putting up different things to talk about what you said. I'm thinking about getting a sign back here behind me that says, did you gargle today? You know, and then, and then put, and then put, that should be a shirt. Did you gargle today? And then at unique underscore behavior, you know, and it should be, it should be connected. You know, did you, did you sing today at, uh, I'm just marketing idea, 1999. I'm telling you, that's merch right there. That's merch for you. You get passive income coming in. All right. So, um, when it comes to, uh, these these different aspects of our vagal nerve um you given us some tips on how we can start to manually i guess as you regulate it or reframe it how would you describe it yeah to regulate your nervous system and basically what you're doing is in the kind of most simplified way and obviously it takes a lot of practice because like i said the ninja is not going to put down weapons without being shown it's safe so it's the beginning of a practice over an extended period of time where you're reframing, you're doing some techniques. Obviously, it's a, a lot more complicated, but the kind of bone framework of it, the, the kind of concept behind it all is to strengthen that vagal tone, which is a magnet, which is, again, it's simple but not easy, as Daniel Siegel says. Um, but what we actually want to do is we want to promote integration of our body. We want to get our body back to that integrated balanced state because when we're more balanced... Our, yeah. When our nervous system is more regulated, we will mm -hmm. see other people as 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 connected beings. So we'll we'll feel a lot less defensive with other people. The more regulated we are, the less defensive we are. The more we'll be able to to live life without feeling frightened or on edge all the time. However, we won't become numb, dull in our senses to the point we don't recognize provocation oh, or danger. We will be. We'll be still sensitive, or I'm not personally. I'm not going to use the word sensitive. We will still be aware of that, yeah. but we will not be managed or controlled. Uh, we won't be managed by it, and in turn, our nervous system is now off balance. It is now, uh, as it were, becoming defensive. We can find ourselves living a defensive life because what someone has done to us or mistreatment, to the point that we lose sight of all the good people that come across our path. 
Mm. And it's exactly that. So we're not looking to get rid of our ninja because we need our ninja and our ninja is brilliant. So none of this is about getting rid of that. It's about it's about sharpening up our ninja's mind. So our ninja in the past has thwacked people that were innocent. It's <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you say that again, please? Could you please say that again? <laughs> it sounds so much better in your in your accent. Say it again. The thwacked people. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it. <laughs> well, and some people live their life doing what again? Say the word again. Whack. Yeah. They, yeah. they just love doing it to people, and now they become accustomed to it, and they call that, well, I'm happy now, and I'm just happy because that person's out of my life, but actually, they're just a, 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 a facking, whacking machine, yeah. uh, cutting, cutting people out of their life, and actually, maybe uh, that person... Um, shouldn't be the center of attention but our nervous system should be yeah so that uh, we can we can be around anybody but we're not going to lose our cool yeah uh, overall because we'll have a pill we'll have a pillow nearby we'll have a song we'll have some listerine to gargle we'll be ready yeah i'll go ahead you were gonna you were gonna say but it's not necessarily saying we should be around people who feel like full so if you have experienced trauma the person that instigated the trauma yes is yeah. that will dysregulate you completely so that's when you would need to put about so the aim is yeah. to regulate the nervous system so you've also oh. got to, as much as we don't want to thwack any innocent people we're also not going to let our guard down to to people that have hurt us in the past